am I good enough to do this? Um, I woke up on the day and you know when your body is just saying, not today. Slow. I'm tired. I just felt fatigued. And then I've generally sacrificed a lot of family time over the years for my photography, for clients. Mm. You know, I've gone to different things. Um, We, We are our own worst enemies as well. Yeah. Because when you know what you're capable of, and like within yourself, if you know you're not working to that level you're supposed to, you think you're so, oh, you've told yeah, yourself you, think you need you're to slacking. work too. You think you're slacking. Mm. Well, none of us are perfect. No creatives are perfect. I don't care what anyone says, what they do on YouTube, what they pretend to be. Mm. None of us are perfect. We all have days like this. Hi guys, it's Devs. And it's Compton, and welcome to the Be Cool Studio Podcast. Yeah, we're there again. We're, we're back again. What do are we you, talking about today, bro? Do you know what? It's quite funny that we are talking about this subject because I kind of been feeling it myself lately. But the subject today is burnout. How do we handle it as as creators? Jump yeah. in, brother. We, we, all, we all go through it, mm. right? But... We all go through it at different stages. Yeah. And and like you, I've been feeling that way. Like I've genuinely over the past what two weeks, I've been flat out since um school holidays have been over. I've mm. been flat out. And then I think it was like Monday last week. I kind of felt it. Remember I was t- telling you it was just like, bro, I went to bed and I just didn't want to get up. I've like, I got tons of edits to do, I've got tons of stuff to sort out. My body was like, nah, you sit there. Hell down, mm. you need to chill. So we all go to it. Um, but for me, it it definitely comes when I've taken on too much. How do you define too much? As in, like, I've got a lot of work going on yeah. already. And then I then take on more pressure and more work. And that pressure can come from, like, for me, I've got a family, a little young family. So that pressure comes from having to do stuff with family, balance family time, and also balance my actual work now that I'm actually a full-time photographer. So, you know, it's one of those things where people tell you you need to say no sometimes, right? But as creatives, we know we need that money. So we're always like, we need to be on it. We need yeah. to take that job. But sometimes it's it's probably better to just mm. say no. Yeah. For your body's sake, for your brain's sake. I suppose as well, because we are very aware of the fact we need to provide. Sometimes you do say to yourself, even though you know you've got a lot of work on, you'll get that call like where they'll need you the next day. And it might be a one hour shoot, but you know, travel time is probably 45 minutes each way. Mm -hmm. So that's an hour and a half in itself. Then an hour when you get there, but you know the shoot's probably not an hour because you've got set up <laughs> yeah, time. Not, nothing's an hour. Yeah. Pack down time, yeah. editing time. But within that, I say this, when do, like for you, when do you actually know, okay, do you know what? I've got enough work on, even though this job is going to pay X amount for my sanity, I can't do it. When do you get to that stage where you, you know not to take that job though? It's my body tells me. Mm. Like... My energy levels drop. Yeah. My um attention's like span is very short. Yeah. Like I'm very snappy. So that's something I notice as well. It's like um I personally sometimes take it out and I apologize for this in advance, Laura. Um my other half, but sometimes take it out on people at home mm. because obviously I can't take it out on my clients. I can't they I can't show them that I'm actually physically exhausted, mentally exhausted. So the next person in line is usually people are close to you or around you very often. So, yeah, um, that's when I know that I've had enough. My body and my, my, my head tells me, like, nah, you you need to chill. And then, like, it's almost like my body just shut down. I'll start, I'll start having headaches, migraines, like, literally. And it's just, like, all across my head. It was just, like, killing us. And, and because, obviously, I technically do not have... Um, uh, for my glasses. Same. 
we literally just said this the other day because we yeah, need to get special we need to get like, special v- glasses VDU for, or something some, like that crazy visual so, display unit and I certain said on sp- average I think on average a day I'm on my computer at least five to six hours and that's sometimes straight just straight editing for that yeah long. so it's not good it isn't because off the back of that with the jobs that I've done historically since about 18 and 19 my jobs have required me to work with computer screens and it's quite strange that i've never actually gone out of my way to actually get those prescription lenses because especially with the job i'm at now so as you know that's full time and i'm looking at a screen for about eight nine hours a day for actual work then when we're doing the admin stuff for the studio or i'm editing images so on a on any given day, I'm actually looking at a screen for a minimum nine, wow. ten hours. And that is not good. And you get headaches, like you say. And I always find it interesting and funny because majority of the time when we speak to each other, let's say it's early doors, first thing in the morning, and it's like via voice notes, all I hear from you is, oh, bro. God, and you could always tell, tell that something's not, yeah, he's, yeah. he's not woke up in a good mood today. Yeah, and I hear it when you say like, oh, bro, I've got a banging headache. And what do I always say to you? I always say to you like, drink brother, water. drink some water. And I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but try and rest. And for a creative, telling a creative to rest, it's kind of almost sacrilege because you're self-employed. Yep. And you know that if you don't work, where's money the money coming, coming from? <laughs> but you do need that balance though. And it's a, it's a dangerous game that we play and especially for myself as well, because you know, I'm in a full-time position and I do this. And it's like, I went to my nephew, right? My nephew was 13 recently. Had a family get together. At the point of recording this, we had a family get together yesterday. And, um, I woke up on the day and you know, when your body is just saying, not today, slow. I'm tired. I just felt fatigued, like physically. It's not just a physical, like, you know, when you're mentally fatigued, when you're mentally drained and I thought, oh my gosh. And then we had to come to the studio because my partner had a maternity shoot. They got my partner with a maternity shoot. Anyone who needs a maternity shoot, you know where to go. Bye. (laughs) Right, promo there. <laughs> Quick promo there. <laughs> so then, um, yeah, I did the shoot and I was tired on the shoot. And then I came home and then we had a couple hours to chill before we had to go to my nephew's birthday. And I just literally said, like, my social battery is on oh. red right now. And it took everything within me to keep the energy going. But I could only manage it for a few hours. And yeah. then I just felt burnt out. I was tired. You know what's crazy as well? Like, I felt it when I was first coming up in industry too. Mm. Because when you first come in industry, right, you just want to be working, constantly working. Mm. But then you also get a point where um, you don't get any jobs either yeah. too. And um, and that's where the mental side of it comes in because you then start questioning whether you're good enough. So am I good enough to do this? Um I, I'm not getting paid work. It can go months. I remember going months, not like now where COVID was involved, was yeah. like genuinely go months where there was just like no work. But I still had work from previous thing that I needed to finish. But I was more focused on stuff not coming in. Yeah. When I should have been focused on the stuff that I already have that should get done. And that just took away my whole my whole mojo like for doing anything and I'm just like you know I can't be bothered anymore mm. I just don't want to do this anymore like I've I've gone through and all creatives go through this at some stage where you just like you know should I just pack it in when like, was the last time you felt it? like that oh it's ages since our last conversation obviously yeah. like that's the that's the key to it right it it can burnout can lead to mental health issues and we all know, and we've been there, I've been there, and we've talked about it in the past, like, that is, like, a dangerous place to be, right? Especially when when you, you're also trying to compete and compare yourself to other people as well. Like, that can lead to, to, to more mental health and even worse burnout because you don't understand what those people are probably going through behind closed doors as well. Mm. But because they're showing it on social media as this, oh, 
great thing that well i'm living my life i'm busy i'm constantly busy i'm doing i'm active like they might have days where they're like literally like i can't be bothered yeah but what's good now in terms of managing it um is you can now schedule posts so you can batch edit stuff all of this mm. stuff and then schedule posts so it might look like you're busy on social but you're actually now nah, you're sat in your house chilling for a week yeah. so that's one way of potentially managing burnout mm. is do a lot of of your work get it done and then schedule a couple of weeks worth of posts that can go out and then give yourself some time to actually relax rest go out meet up with friends catch up with friends you haven't seen for a while because as creatives we know yeah sometimes you get so caught up with work life yeah. that you tend to miss out on a lot of things i saw a meme recently and it's so true and it was like something along the lines of adult relationships like friendships are you're in a group chat you all message each other like so let's say it's today and um, due to life you all schedule to meet up but it's like in six months time because <laughs> yeah. you both everyone's so busy yeah, everyone's got family life you know some people mm. have businesses some people have work yeah. normal work you know that type of stuff but yeah so i would say that's that would be one way you could mm. and you can um uh, i've done it before and i do it now like i've got posts ready to go like yeah. work ready to go um stuff i've done ready to go so I try and do it now, but I'm still guilty of occasionally slipping back into that. Like, it's not something that you can completely get, you know, go away from. But once you learn how to manage it effectively, you'd be, yeah. you'd be sweet. But when the hunger's there as well to want more, you know, when you're, when you're a natural hustler, hustler. <laughs> when you're an ambitious person, I'm not saying people who are not natural hustlers or are not, as ambitious as others because it's all um, bespoke to the person in terms of being a hustler and being ambitious. But when you've got that natural drive in you to want more and to level up and to excel, it's very difficult. Even when you know you're mentally drained, sometimes like I do this, if I know that I've not done enough work and that's based off my standard, even if I'm sometimes tired, and I find myself just chilling and allowing myself half an hour to play a game on my phone or watch Something. TV. Yeah. I think to myself, you've not earned this. This is half an hour that you could have been doing, doing something, something else. to work towards where yeah. you're trying to get to. It's tough. Yeah. Because I suppose we we are our own worst enemies as well. Yeah. Because when you know what you're capable of, and like within yourself, if you know you're not working to that level you're supposed to, you think you so. Oh, you've told yeah, yourself you, think you need slacking. to work too. You think you're slacking, but the older I am getting, I'm learning to be more conscious, understanding of myself. Conscious of that you need you need to chill. You need mm. you need that time. Even if you you well say factor in that time yeah. at least twice a week. Mm. Say look for an hour every single. Those two days, sorry. Yeah. For an hour, those two days, I'll only do this. Mm. I that can help you come back down. Yeah. And refocus and go again. Um, you'll see a lot of creators talk about it now on YouTube, etc. A lot of the bigger creatives talk about it because they're under even more pressure. Because technically speaking, again, we always go back to the fact that we do this together, mm. and it's a lot easier. But we both run things separately. Yeah. And I run my own photography stuff. Mm. And I'm social media marketer. I am the um, content creator. Mm. I'm the photographer. Yeah. I'm the a, a, a accountant as mm. well sometimes. Yeah. You know, like I have to manage all of those things. Mm. But then bear in mind, I still got to do what we need to do for Be Cool Studios. Yeah. But then I still got to do family stuff. And then I've generally sacrificed a lot of family time over yeah. the years for my photography, for clients. Mm. You know, I've gone to different things um, that I probably shouldn't have gone to because I've missed out on opportunities to spend time with my family. But because I was like, oh, great networking opportunity, I took the job. But then when I come home, I'm like, oh, shh, I wish I didn't. And I start going in. I, I just wish I didn't take that because I know now it's going to be a drain. 
editing and sorting yeah. out and stuff like that. That's that's sometimes what brings it on for me. It's like I'll take on the job thinking it's quite easy and whatever. Yeah. And then when the when the job's finished and I get home, I'm like, that was a nightmare. As a family man, how do you balance taking on too much work? Like you say, you know, missing out on family time. Because it's a double-edged sword because, you know, you are self-employed. So one hand, if you don't work, work. Don't where's that money pay. coming from? But also as a family man, you know, how do you balance the time between working it's and difficult. and not spending time with the family that in your head, you know, you should be doing, but if I don't work, I don't get paid. It, it's it's super difficult. It's not something you can, you can just put a formula and I say, this is how I'm going to do it. Yeah. You just have to try your best to put, implement things, implement days, implement yeah. time into your weeks to try and do those things. Mm. Um, you we're not going to get it right. You're not going to get it completely right. There are going to be days where you think you bought, I think it comes um, hand in hand if you've got a partner that understands that, that look, it's not, I'm how I'm just, I just want to put money on the table. I just yeah. want to put food on the table. Sorry. I want to, you know, I want to make sure we're eating. I want to make sure the roof on our head is still secure. So this is why I'm taking on this. I'm not taking on it because I didn't want to spend time with you because yeah. it almost come across as you don't actually want to spend time with your family. Mm. Um, so for me, uh, like I said, I still, I'm slight guilty of it, taking on too much sometimes. But my partner kind of understands that, look, the only reason I'm taking on this is because of this reason, yeah. you know, because we need to we need to take it on. So I try and do like, for instance, today we spent some time together. Yeah. We went out. I didn't touch my computer um, this morning. I probably yeah, because tonight. in the time I've known you, I've, I've kind of realized that Sundays, a few hours on Sundays is usually family, family time um, for you. Saturdays or Sundays is usually family yeah. time because Monday to Friday, school, work, etc. Yeah, so I try and not bother you as much on weekends. I don't know if you've realised that now. The voice notes have kind of <laughs> died, like, <off. laughs> died down a little bit more now. I know, you know it's family time on weekends. Sorry, Laura. Sorry, Kobe. <laughs> Sometimes I need it. <laughs> but um, no, it's very, it's, it's, it's very good also when you're aware of when you're feeling that way, because sometimes we we try and ignore it and we ignore it, we ignore it until we get to that point where we just Low. literally like we implode. Yeah. And, you know, because I work in, I've had instances before where it could be like family or friends where, you know, you've had that, it's not even so, so much a stressful day at work, for example, um, it could just be one of those days where you're supposed to get a deal that's supposed to drop in and then the client bails out and then you're now thinking, oh, but I thought you were ready to sign. Fine. Then that just throws your whole day off. Then you come home, your mum's on the phone now. You might be a bit snappy with your mum. You've not realised and you're thinking, oh, I got to call mum and apologise. Sugar, honey, iced tea, I shouldn't have done that. Let me call back mum. Mum, mum understands, you know what I mean? But... But it, it can tough. be the little things and you snap. Mm. It's like the littlest thing. Like you, we, I have it all. I do it all. I'm super guilty of it. I'm yeah. like, I am not perfect. Mm. None of us are perfect. No creatives are perfect. I don't care what anyone says, what they do on YouTube, what they pretend to be. Mm. None of us are perfect. We all have days like this. Yeah. You'll go home and then one thing will go wrong or not even go wrong. You just walk in the house and you'll say, boo. And you just went, bam, that's mm. it. You just like, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to talk to you. Mm. Just leave me alone. I just want to be on my own right now. I just want to chill. Right. And if people are out there trying to pretend that that doesn't happen to them, bull mm. I call you bull mm. seriously. Um, so yeah. So like we talk about not accepting it. You have to learn how to accept it and acknowledge it that I am feeling burnout. It's not the end or be all to then re relay that to your client. Like, look, I'm sorry. I've been feeling a little bit burned out. I know I've got a deadline to, to actually deliver this by such and such date. Mm. But because of how I'm feeling right now, I can't or do not have the energy and the mental capacity to actually complete that task. And I feel like if I push myself, I'll push myself too far. And then I don't want to do that task altogether. So yeah. I'll take some time out 
to just um, relax and come back down to her. Can you bear with me for a couple of days, a couple mm. of weeks, etc.? And nine times out of ten, unless their client has got that thing for dead, like a super super dead yeah. that they need, they'll understand. Hundred percent. They'll understand. Like I find that, like I'm always putting myself under pressure. I need to deliver. I need to deliver by this to say. And I'll mess with my client, and they'll be like, "My right, boy, take your time, man. It's all right. The image yeah. is there. They're not going anywhere." Mm. You, I know you got you got sort you sort yourself out. We know you got a family life. You good? Yeah. And f- off the back of that, I also think I look at the burnout stuff. My opinion on you know different levels. So you know we've explored how to acknowledge when you're feeling the mental fatigue from a burnout as a creative. The other side I wanted to touch on is. How do you come back from a burnout from a creative standpoint? And what I mean is for argument's sake, we are speaking as creatives, i.e. Mm. photographers, for example. And the style of shoots that you specialize in, because it's something you briefly touched on before where you've said, you know, you do like brand shoots, for example, yeah. or um, portfolio shoots in a studio. And then let's say after a while, you've built up enough collateral and enough of a name that people know you're very good at portfolios, mm. studio portfolios, for example. And then let's say clients keep coming back to you, different clients, but they kind of want the same thing that you've done before. How do you then not burn out from keep creating the same content? Or doing repetitive content. Yeah. So I kind of went the long way around to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, how right. from, from, from that standpoint, how do you keep the ideas fresh so you don't burn out because you keep doing the same kind of shoots every single week? Um, look at it. Look at it like uh, like a complete. It's like a completely different shoot. Um, mm. and look like it, it's a completely different client. So, a good thing is those shoots in particular. When I do those type of shoots, they usually slightly different. So what I try and do is switch it up. I will have um a different makeup artist potentially. Yeah, that's one. That's one way of of actually refreshing it because you what you you have somebody different in the studio. Yeah. Um, using a different setting, a different background, a different setup, going down a different route in terms of the actual images you're gonna create. Um, that's one way I've I I kind of keep it fresh. Yeah. But also try not put too much pressure on myself during the actual shoot and just have fun, enjoy mm. it because I feel like if I'm enjoying it, it then comes across to the client that they're gonna enjoy it as well, and then the whole experience, the whole day, just goes a lot smoother. A lot more fun that way. Can I ask you a question? Do you ever get, and I don't want to use this world, this world, this world, this word mildly, but it's genuinely how I feel sometimes. So do you ever feel like slight anxiety before a shoot? And when I mean that, I mean, is in, even though you've been doing it this long, because I feel that way and I'm new in comparison to you, well, as in like, oh my God, what if, not just thinking, what if my camera doesn't work? None of that as in, oh my God, what if I don't get the settings right? What happens if, if they move over here? What happens if um, I try this 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 new setting, this new ISO setting, which I've never tried before, and then now I've got to take a few more test shots and then they're going to think, I don't know what I'm doing because I'm saying one set, one. The funny you thing, ever, have you ever felt funny that? Funny you say that. Right. I'm going through that right now. <laughs> Serious? Because I've got a job. Um it's not necessarily anxiety. I've con- I've done the job before. Mm. I've done a job for this particular company before. Name no names. But I've got a job coming up um, that involves not necessarily people. Right. Uh, oh, which is yeah, what I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm big on. And it's a job I'm capable of doing. I know what I'm doing. But I've done so much research since basically securing this job two days ago. Right. I've been on my phones looking at different options um, in terms of lens choices, blah, 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 angles, settings, all of this stuff. I watched so many videos on this particular topic and this product that I'm going to be photographing. And um, there is that thing in the back of me is like, what if I screw this up? Because this could potentially be a big client, not just for this one job. There is more work in the pipeline for this client. And it's a huge client. And I think it only comes when it's a big, big client. That's when I feel it the yeah. most. If it's a big job, like when I say big job, I mean, I can redo a photo shoot, like a portfolio session in studio. 
things like weddings and wedding photographers will probably be the ones you you you, you hear talk about this a lot weddings and certain events you know like one-off events those things are the ones that give you the big biggest anxiety like yeah one of my friends called me recently for a wedding you know who you are big up yourself and your fiance and he's like yeah dems i know you do photography i'm just reaching out to find out um yeah looking for a photographer i said big man hear what i'm about to say to you right now <laughs> it's not for me i have never shot a wedding before i do studio work i am not a wedding photographer i'm gonna say this to you right now to save yourself the, the headache from your missus find a photographer who has got at least a couple of years under the belt i said my boy is dope at it but he's not taking on any more weddings i said do not under any circumstance mm -hmm. get a first-time photographer or a photographer that's not shot many weddings, weddings. your missus will kill you yeah i said that's my that's my wedding gift to you yeah yeah <laughs> oh, you, that, and that's being not that's being real that's mm. being honest um so yeah like if if you want to know how to handle that type of pressure yeah. speak to a wedding photographer they'll yeah. tell you they'll tell mm. you how they how they deal with that type of stuff it's not easy because yeah. you're going in there knowing that you've got one shot one chance mm. and if you screw it up yeah not it's not just you that's going down like like your whole repetition because mm. there's nothing worse than someone saying that nah he deleted he screwed up he didn't do this he didn't yeah. do that He's messed up this, blah, blah, blah. And then that word of mouth goes around, especially in the wedding industry. Yeah. Well, that shit travel quick. Mm. And then you're out of work. And I suppose then, yeah, just, you know, we're not saying don't use new photographers, but, you know, within reason, we understand people have to learn the trade, but certain things like one-off events, get someone who's got a bit more experience. But on an end note, um, how would you surmise if you could in... A sentence or two. How would you tell tell them to handle burnout as a creative? As a creative, put time put time into your calendar to actually take a break. Um, it might be difficult, but do it. Even if it's an hour, an hour is better than nothing. So put some time into your calendar on a weekly basis. All right, I'm gonna take an hour. I'm gonna do nothing. I'm gonna chill out. I'm gonna go for a walk go for a run, whatever, go for, meet up with friends and mm. just relax. And for me, I'd say whatever comes natural to you, take time for yourself. The older we're getting, understand that time is the most important thing. Time is something you'll never get back. Take time for you as well. You are important as much as your clients and family. But thank you guys for watching this week. And as we say, come to what's the motto? Be cool. Be true. Be you. All right, manners and respect. Oh. Ew. Oh. <laughs>